Hi, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with a summer transfer move to Arsenal. Now, big news emerging today, not about a player, but about one of the owners of Arsenal Football Club, and that's Alicia Usmanov. Now, there's lots of reports going around today, um, coming originally from the Financial Times, that Alicia Usmanov is looking to sell his 30% stake in Arsenal, which is huge, huge news. Of course, uh, the club is owned, 67% of it is owned by Stan Kroenke, the American owner, and Alicia Usmanov owns 30% of the club. Now, you've got these two billionaire owners that sit on the board at Arsenal and they don't really talk to each other, they don't um, work together, and frankly, it looks like, from what we've seen over the years, they don't like each other at all. And it's been really frustrating for fans that, you know, two guys with lots of money, it hasn't really been spent. Usmanov has said over the years, listen, give me control of a club and I will invest. He's one of the richest men around. He's the richest man in England, richer than Abramovich. And he said, listen, if I come in, I'll do like Abramovich. If Neymar becomes available, we'll be in the bidding for these sort of players. And he's had fans excited, but Kronke does not give him a look in, does not give him any sort of uh, say whatsoever when it comes to Arsenal Football Club, which seems ridiculous. Now, in the past, Usmanov has tried to buy Kronke out. He offered him uh, $1.6 billion to take over the club. That was rejected. Kronke made a counteroffer of $525 million to buy um, Usmanov shares. That was rejected. Um, and now that Usmanov looks like he could be selling up, that could mean that Kronke could take full control of the club by buying those shares if those shares are offered to him, which quite frankly, for me, I don't like that. I don't like one person just having the complete control from top to bottom of the club. I've not been convinced over the years of Kronke and the amount of money that he's invested into the club. I mean, we can see again this season, I know we've not made it into the Champions League, so income has dropped, but basically we brought in a new manager and we've given him a budget of around about 50 million pounds or 60, around about that, to build a team. Now, you look at a team like Everton, they're about to pay 50 million pounds for Richarlison on one player. And that's been a budget of Arsenal Football Club's new manager for the whole season. And this is sort of how Kroenke's operated. And this is why over the years, a lot of people have wanted Usmanov. And what is going to happen to Usmanov now? Will he go and join his friend Mashiri, who owns Everton? And as I just said, Everton making big moves this season. They spent a lot of money last season. They're doing it again this season. Um, the guy's putting it into his personal pocket and, you know, investing in these players. There's been rumours before that Usmanov has, you know, been helping out up there, which he's denied. But could he now turn his attentions to Everton? And that means that he could go there and build a powerhouse at Everton that could rival Arsenal. I mean, they're rivaling us already, but they rival us in a mega way. I mean, this is worrying for me. And um, I've never been able to work out why, you know, you know, they've not been able to put their differences aside and give Usmanov um, a controlling stake or give him some sort of stake in a club in which he has a say or some say on the board but worrying worrying that one person now it could look like one person will have complete control of a club which I never think is a good thing whether it be Kronke or Usmanov it's not good for one person to just have complete and utter control of a club we've seen it before in the past where it can go horribly horribly wrong so Alicia Usmanov could be on his way out um, and I'd really like to get your guys comments on it I mean, do you think the, the model that Kronke is operating, operating under is fine? Um, he lives within his means. You know, we, um, it is what it is when it comes to performances. Or would you like to have somebody like an Alicia Usmanov who have more of an Abramovich model, would spend big, but we don't know if, you know, he continued to spend big if it went wrong. We could run into problems. I don't know. I'd love to hear from you guys your feelings on the whole issue, but... Um, Big, big news today. Um, also, um, Ivan Gazidis, I spoke about this a couple of days ago and I said that um, Gazidis, uh, it looks like um, Gazidis uh, could be, um, well, a turn down AC Milan. He'd been linked with a move to AC Milan to take over there, but it looks like he'd turned that down. 
Hearing news today now that maybe Gazidis could be on his way um, to AC Milan. Now, contradictory news, but that he could be on his way to AC Milan, that he's uh, willing to take over there, is what one of the publications are saying. I still think that Gazidis will stay at Arsenal. Um, Gazidis is currently over here in Singapore uh, with the Arsenal squad. What he's been working on and building over the past season and a half, I think he's going to stay and complete that. And I'd be really, really surprised if he did go to AC Milan. So I think he will still be staying at Arsenal. Now, Kingsley Coman, we've been linked with him um, a lot over the past week or so. You remember the other day I said that he uh, liked that uh, tweet or Instagram post um, linking him with a move to Arsenal. Well, listen, he's uh, sort of um, come out with some news on the, on the whole um, issue, which will disappoint Arsenal fans. He said that, I've, and these were his words, he said, I've had no contact with Arsenal. I've just extended my contract here at Bayern and I'm planning to stay here for many more years. So it looks like uh, Kingsley Coman won't be coming to Arsenal. Although... We've heard things like that before. Mesut Ozil famously said he's staying at Real Madrid and ended up at Arsenal, so who knows. But it does look like Kingsley Coman. I mean, why would he move when you think about it? Why would he move? You're up buying, you're winning stuff every year, you're getting paid well. Um, Robin and Ribery are reaching the end of their days, so you know you're going to take over. It would be, wouldn't make sense for him to come to Arsenal, really, from a personal point of view. But we can always dream, can't we? Um, Alex Iwobi, remember yesterday we run that poll and we said, does he deserve a new contract? Now, this was so, so close in um, the voting on this. 52% of you said, yes, he deserves a new contract. 48% of you said, no, he shouldn't get that. It's more or less an even split um, on this one. Um, I'll tell you what, Iwobi has a huge, huge season ahead of him. He has to perform this season. No excuses from him. He's been given a second chance where many people think he doesn't deserve it. He has to deliver this season. So, big season for him. They can't even start saying he's just a youth player no more. He's 22 now. He has to deliver. Big season for Alex Wobi if he gets that new contract. Steven Nzonzi is still linked with Arsenal today. Now, um, Arsenal are said to be really interested in him, but unwilling to meet the £35 million release clause. They're just not moving on that. Arsenal saying it's a ridiculous amount, which I agree. Uh, Inzonzi's 29. Yes, he did just win the World Cup. His value would have gone up. But Arsenal just unwilling to move on this one, apparently, and are waiting it out. Interestingly, though, that um, Sevilla are uh, looking to sign Bakayoko from Chelsea uh, on a low move. That would, um, you know, replace, really, Inzonzi there in that defensive midfielder position. And maybe could move, mean that um, Inzonzi could move on with Arsenal um, known to be really interested in him. But again, one of those that we're going to have to wait and see if they, um, how the movements work out on that one over the next couple of weeks. Arsenal also linked with a Croatian star who did really well in the World Cup. Um, Domajog uh, Vida of Besiktas. Now, um, he's a very good player. Looked very good in the World Cup. Really, really strong. Um, he's 29. Valued at around about £19 million. Now, uh, Arsenal is said to be um, amongst a host of clubs having a look at him. These rumours coming out of Turkey today um, that Arsenal are one of those clubs that are um, interested in signing him. Um, it does look like he will be on the move um, this summer from Besiktas, but his destination, exact destination is unknown. But Arsenal one of those clubs interested in him. He can play anywhere really across the back four, but he is a centre-back who particularly can also play as a right-back. I'd be surprised if Arsenal signed him, another 29-year-old. I mean, going back from the days when we used to sign pure youngsters and when you reach 30, you were out the door under Arsene Wenger. We're looking at so many experienced players at the moment, but I'd be surprised if Arsenal did sign Vida. But these are rumours coming out of Turkey today, as is rumours around David Ospina, still linking him with a move to Besiktas. Besiktas emerging as the favourites to sign him. Remember, he's been linked with teams like Boca Juniors, Fenerbahce, a whole host of teams, um, Ospina. does look like he will definitely be sold um, this summer, but his destination is still unknown with Besiktas, the favourites, to sign him. Maybe this could be part of a deal, some sort of kind of swap deal or you know, a deal in, involving Vida. Who knows? Um, but we'll have to wait and see what happens with that one. Um, and this last link here to another World Cup um, player, another player that did really well in the World Cup, this time for Senegal. 
And that's Ismaili Saar of Rennes. He plays for Rennes in France. A 20-year-old winger. Of course, Arsenal are looking for a winger at the moment. Now, Rennes want a ridiculous £50 million for Ismaili Saar. Good luck with that one. They're not going to get nothing near that. Um, but Arsenal said to be uh, having a look at him, really interested in signing him, along with uh, um, Liverpool, a few other clubs in the Premier League. He did have a really good World Cup, but at that price, there's no, well, <laughs> that'd be our budget, wouldn't it? £50 million, pounds, all done, boom, right? So um, looking very unlikely at that fee, but their rents are not going to be able to get anywhere near that money. The fee will change, so let's uh, keep an eye and see what happens to that one. Only 20, by the way, and a really talented player. Listen, we're going to be on our way to Singapore today, um, so the show tomorrow will be coming from Singapore. Looking forward to getting over there and watching Arsenal taking on PSG and also Atletico Madrid. Two big tests for Arsenal. Should be really interesting how they get on under Unai Emery. Thanks for watching the show, and we'll be back tomorrow.